So welcome back, everybody. My name is Robert Pranger. I'm Glaston Senior Vice President of Automotive and Display Glass Technologies. And I would like to give you an overview of our solutions for display glass processing. Or, more to the point, of display glass for automotive applications processing solutions. If we look at the trends of the displays in the car, there has only one direction. They started off with very tiny displays, and then they only got bigger, bigger, and bigger. When Mercedes came up out a couple of years ago with this display in the A-Class, everybody said, well, that is really big. But nowadays, they go from pillar to pillar, and there's a new trend emerging on the market. They are even formed. And not just simple shapes, they are getting more and more complex. So on this slide, you see a small overview of how it developed in the last approximately 15 years. In these 15 years, they grew tremendously. They changed many times. Several displays merged into one. And now, the next stage will be displays like Mercedes showcased at this year's CES in January this year. A display reaching from pillar to pillar of the whole dashboard of the car, an extremely complex outside shape, and then also a 3D formed shape to, um, to really mold onto the, your dashboard. So we as Glaston thought, what we can, can we do to show you what our possibilities are to help you if your customers want something like that. So we created this demonstrator piece. It's not a real display, but very similar to one. This demonstrator piece of an automotive display, shaped, cut and grind, not the easiest shape, to show you how we will actually do that. And you might have been wondering what all these pieces on stage uh, we're doing here, these are the different processing steps and I will walk you through that to show you how we will do that. Because at Glaston, we have the most comprehensive portfolio for doing this. We can offer you the pre-processing solutions to get the best quality of the cut and ground part and then we have the forming solution to shape it into the shape that you need for your customers. But now, Let's look at the process a little bit more in the details. What comes first? Well, obviously, first you have to load the input glass and to pre-cut it as closely as possible to the final shape. Because display glass is expensive, so you want to get the most material utilization out of your precious display glass. And now let's look at a short video of how we achieve this. Here you see one of our pre-cutting machine. The machine you see here is relatively small, but we built them up to Gen 10 size. Now you see the positioning of the glass, a multi-directional roller, so that you are sure not to scratch the glass at all. Then the glass is scored, the score line is broken out, and the glass moves to the next processing step. Here you see it from another angle. This is the positioning, now the scoring, break out, and off it goes to the next processing step. And here in the video, the next processing step is already the shape cutting and grinding line. And here you see the positioning in front of the shape cutting and grinding line, also on multi-directional rollers to avoid that you scratch the glass. And this is what you get out of this. This is a pre-cut glass that we used to make these samples here. Now, what is the next step? Well, obviously, cutting and grinding of the real shape of the glass. And for that, let me show you the following video how we're doing this. So here you see the pre-cut glass I just showed you, 
being transported onto our precision cutting machine. The outside contour is scored into the glass with some relief cuts. It's broken out as precisely as possible, and then the glass is moved to the grinding table. This breakout step is extremely crucial because if you create chips in this step, you will not be able to grind them out at all. Or you need such a high grinding allowance that it takes ages. Now you see the grinding. You see our specialized jet ring that allows a minimum overhang and also supports the glass during the grinding process. And what is not shown in this video, but what is also possible, you can do multiple grinding steps. You can even do a polishing step at the end. And you do that on the same grinding table without moving the part at all. And the advantage of that is that each, each contour grinding matches perfectly the contour grinding before because the glass is in the same position. So you have minimum allowance at highest cycle times. And if you want to cut on a different system, for instance a laser system, like if you want to use nesting to increase your material utilization, you can also grind already cut glass. And if you need higher precision, there is also a camera system available on the machine to even locate the part live on the table. And this is the result of it. A perfectly cut and ground piece. Now you might say, well, you can tell us many things, but what is actually the quality of the edge you just ground? Well, let me ask you back. What is edge quality, actually? Well, we at Glaston, we define edge quality in two ways. Or we say it's a combination of two things. One is edge strength. So you want a strong edge so that the glass doesn't break in subsequent processing or when it's actually assembled into the car. And then you want a nice appearance of the edge according to the quality specifications that the OEM customer requires. Now let's first look at edge strength. In this slide you see a graph of uh, edge strength of different processing parameters for a glass for a 0.5 millimeter aluminum silicate glass. And we, ground, we used the same tool, but we used it at different grinding speeds. And what you can see here is that you can go even up to 35 meters per minute feed rate and still achieve relatively good edge strength. Now, I would not recommend to use 35 meters on a real production because it might not be as stable in the long run. But we can definitely assure you that you can reach up to 25 meter per minute with the right combination of parameters. And if you go 25 meters per minute on a pillar-to-pillar -pillar display, it will take you about 15 seconds to grind one part. Now in this case that we showed here, we use a 400 grit wheel and that is a diamond of about 46 micrometer. It gives you already a quite good edge but of course it's not a super polish. But also there, you can do a second step with a fine grinding wheel or even a polishing wheel, or you can even do a three-step approach according to what you actually require. And you can take the optimum process for the optimum quality and the optimum speed and cycle time. Now let's look at the edge itself. One thing that is different between display glass processing and normal automotive glass processing is that the edge in display glass processing is not always a standard pencil edge or C-shape. It can be anything. Sometimes it's chamfered, sometimes it's just the standard pencil edge or C-shape, and sometimes it's even asymmetrical, like you can see on the right-hand side of this picture. But now, let's look at the edge quality itself. And for that, we brought a little camera here, a little microscope, and let's look at an edge really live on stage of one of our pieces. Now this, let me show you, let me first get it right here. This is the actual edge of this piece here. 
you see it's a chamfered edge and you see hang on let me bring that back into focus and you see here there is almost no chips on this edge and just to give you an idea the width of this picture of the frame here is about seven millimeters Here you can see some pictures that we took beforehand. You see the cross-section and you see the edge view of this chamfered glass. And this is some pictures like the ones I showed you live on stage here with the microscope. And if you ask what the surface roughness is that we can achieve, well, it also depends on the wheel. If you take the 400 grit wheel, you will end up with a surface roughness of RAs around one micrometer. And if you go with a polishing step, you can go even below 0.1 micrometer RA. And if you need something in between, you take a fine grinding wheel like 800 grit or 1000 grit. And again, you can combine these steps and achieve the best possible result for you. Now we have a ground piece. What is next? Well, obviously, Heat treatment, meaning bending. And unfortunately, here we don't have a video for you. We cannot show all of our secrets here. But at least I have a picture of a glass of this piece in the furnace, here on this side. And here you can see the glass on the tool, on the ceramic tool that we use for the press bending. The furnace itself is a roller hearth furnace with convection heating. So you can also evenly heat up printed glass, but it's also very helpful for the very subtle and thin display glasses and all the special glass types that you might have. And cycle time is also depending on the size and on the complexity of the part and can be between 20 and 40 seconds. And this is what you get out of this. This is a 3D shaped part made in our furnace that you see on the picture. And normally, in most cases, you would be finished there because usually that's the piece. Maybe you do some printing on top of that, but that's what you send to your customer. But we wanted to create a real demonstrator. So, we took two of these pieces, put a printed piece of PVB in between and laminated it to make it like a real automotive display. As you can see, this is obviously a demonstration part, but also in some applications in the car, you need laminated glass, maybe for the safety impact on the rear side entertainment or for other reasons. So there are also options to laminate these glasses. And this piece has been made out of 1.1 millimeter glass, but we can work down to 0.5 millimeter glass, and the differences are not so much. So I hope I was able to give you a little bit of an overview of what we can do to create the most challenging automotive displays. And if you have any challenges for us, just contact us and we're going to figure the solutions out together with you. Thank you very much.